In this video, we'll be going over the custom header and how to set it up. The custom header can initially be enabled and accessed by opening the App Launcher menu and locating the Settings app on the bottom right. Once you click on the Settings app, the tile will slide over and reveal a number of sub-menu options, including one called Header. Go ahead and click on the Header option to enable the custom header and also to bring up the Edit Header mini app menu on the sidebar to the right. Once your header is enabled, go ahead and refresh the browser page to update the header. You'll notice that there is a new icon with two circling arrows on the top right corner of the header. This is the header toggle switch that allows you to swap between the navigation header and the custom header. It is also important to note that as you navigate throughout Finstack, you will always be able to see your current contacts on the top right corner of the custom header allowing the user to always know what context they are navigated to within the software. As you may have already noticed, when the header is first enabled, it automatically comes with a home button and a removable edit header button. The edit header button is really helpful for when you are initially setting up your header as it allows you to easily reach the edit header menu. You can also reopen the edit header menu by going back to the settings app within the app launcher. Okay, so on the top of the edit header menu, you have a few different options. The first one is the home button. This option allows you to configure the default home button. Now, before I officially set up the home button, I wanna go ahead and demonstrate what each of the available link types do, especially since you'll be seeing this in a lot of the custom header configuration forms. The first option in the list is the action link type. This option allows you to set up and call any JavaScript action and trigger it via the button. So if you are familiar with JavaScript and want this button to do something specific, you can set that up using the action link type. For example, here is a basic JavaScript alert. I'll go ahead and type that in and hit apply to set the button. I'll need to refresh the browser page to refresh the changes I did to the home button. And as you can see, as soon as I click on the button, my alert JavaScript action gets triggered. Okay, so the next option in the list is the hash option. Hash is specific to Finstack in which it allows you to copy and paste any Finstack URL starting from the hashtag frame and whatever else follows that to create a hyperlink to it. This is not limited to Finstack graphics. You can literally open any view you'd like as long as you grab the hashtag frame and onward. In this example, Let's say I want to create a hyperlink to this particular folio view. I'll just grab the portion of the URL after the hashtag and paste that back into the header form. I'll do a quick refresh, and as you can see, when I click on the home button, it now takes me to the folio view, and in the URL, you can see the hash link that we previously pasted. Okay, next is the URL option. This basically allows you to create a hyperlink to any internal or external URL. For this example, I'll go ahead and copy the www.j2inn.com URL, paste it into the form, and hit apply. I'll do a quick refresh, switch to the custom header view, and click on the home button. And as you can see, that instantly takes me to the URL that was set. Okay, the last option is the graphic option. This allows the user to easily create a hash link uh, to any of their existing fin graphics and allows you to choose what exact target ref you'd like to load data for when that graphic is loaded. So it basically just makes it a lot easier instead of having to go ahead and copy paste the hashtag frame URLs into the form. Okay, so now that uh, we've went over the available link types and we've set our home button, we can now move on to the next options in the edit header menu. If you ever need to disable the custom header, you can simply click on the disable header option. You can then use that very same button to re-enable it. Below that, we have the option to add a new button to our custom header. As soon as you click on the add button option, it will instantly create a new button and switch you over to the edit button view. The set display name option allows you to set a display name that will appear on your button. Below that, you have the set icon option, which allows you to search through a list of available icons and select one to represent your new button. The add security tags option allows you to set security marker tags to that specific button, which can later be used to filter certain buttons per individual users. Below that, you have the option to set a badge. 
Badges are basically little badges that appear in the top right of the button that indicate whatever data you'd like to show. So we recommend using queries that return a numeric value. Uh, read count is one example that would work great when setting up a badge. Next we have the set link option which allows the user to choose from the link types discussed earlier in the video. Once you are done setting up your button, refresh the browser page, switch back over to the custom header view, and you should now see your new button. Not only can you add buttons to your custom header, but you can also create a button that contains a submenu drop-down list. To create a submenu, first you'll need to create a new button which will serve as the trigger that will hide and show the submenu drop-down. There is no need to set a link to the initial button since it will only be serving as uh, a trigger. Once you're ready, you'll see an option called Add Submenu Button. Go ahead and click on this to begin setting up a new submenu button. So go ahead and set a display name, icon, and link as needed. In this case, I will go ahead and create two submenu buttons that will take me to specific graphics within my project just to demonstrate what the submenu will look like. Once you're done, go ahead and refresh the browser page, switch over to the custom header, and you should now see your new button. Once you click on the designated button, a drop-down menu should instantly appear containing all of the submenu buttons that you've added to it. If you ever need to remove a button, simply open the edit header menu, select the button you want to remove, and click on the remove option to get rid of it. You also have the option to reorder the available buttons by moving them up and down the list. Alright, so those are the basics on how to create and edit your custom header menu. Be sure to check out our other related videos on how to set up a custom header security filter and also how to set the custom header as the default per individual user. Alright, thanks for watching.